Have you ever seen someone pull off an impossible feat of flexibility because they're double jointed? Why are only some people double jointed? And what does it actually mean? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. Despite the fact that people often say they're double jointed, it turns out there's actually no such thing. That's right, it's all a sham. Well, kind of. You see, the term double jointed implies that some people have some kind of extra joint that allows them to really bend and twist their bones into awkward positions. But the truth is, that's just not possible. No one out there has extra special joints that lets them bend their arms, fingers, or other limbs into strange poses, no matter how flexible they might seem. Okay, so then, what's the deal? Why can some people really bend their joints all around while others really can't? Well, turns out what we think of as being double jointed is actually called hypermobility syndrome. For most of us, it hurts to stretch our joints beyond their normal range of motion. But for people with hypermobility, there's little or no discomfort at all, allowing them to contort their bodies in ways that makes most of us cringe. So that's why some people can bend their joints so much, but how? What actually causes people to have hypermobility? Well, most joints inside your body are held together by ligaments that connect bone to bone and tendons which attach your muscles to your bones. Usually, we all have about the same range of motion in our joints, but if you have extra flexible ligaments wrapped around them, you can bend and twist around extra far. There are also people who have hypermobility for a different reason, the shape of the joint. This usually happens in a ball and socket joint like the shoulder. The shallower the socket, the more give there is for the ball to move around. For some people, the ball can even slide out of the socket completely, allowing them to essentially dislocate their bone purposefully and painlessly. Just, you know, careful who you pull that one in front of, because it might not be painless for everyone. We've all got gallons of blood flowing through our veins, but not necessarily the same type of blood. But why do people have different blood types? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. In case you didn't know, there are four main blood types. Type A is the oldest and even existed before humans. Blood types B, AB, and O were all formed by genetic mutations over millions of years. Your blood type can also be positive or negative based on whether your blood has an extra protein in it. So that means, all in all, there's eight distinct blood types. A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative, O positive, and O negative. Over 70% of people have either A positive or O positive blood. Blood types are super important because if you ever need a blood transfusion, getting the right type can literally mean life or death. You see, your blood is really good at fighting off cells that aren't supposed to be there, and that includes blood cells of a different type than your own. If you get an infusion with the wrong blood type, your body will go into defense mode and destroy the brand new blood cells. This can make you sicker and can even lead to death. But that doesn't necessarily mean some blood types can't mix. Type A blood doesn't mix with B, so getting type B or AB blood is bad news. But you'd be perfectly fine with type A or O. The same goes for type B. It doesn't mix well with type A, so people with type B blood can only receive type B or O. Type AB blood has it good because they can receive any blood type, A, B, AB, or O, and be totally fine. Type O is known as the universal donor because you can give it to anyone with any blood type. That makes them great for giving blood, but it also means they can only receive type O. Okay, so all that begs the question, why do humans have so many blood types? Well, researchers don't know for sure, but it seems the main reason is to fend off disease. For instance, 
People with type O blood are much less likely to get malaria and suffer from its symptoms. And that blood type is very widespread in areas like Africa, where malaria is common. People with type O blood are more likely to get the bubonic plague, and people with type A blood are more likely to get smallpox. So since areas like China, India, and Russia have had major outbreaks of both diseases, they have lots of people with type B blood. So, does it really matter much what blood type you have? Nope, not really. The only time in life that your blood type really matters is when there's experts there to help. And now you know why people have different blood types. People are born with all sorts of different eye colors. But why? What causes our eyes to be different colors? And why aren't they all the same? Let's find out on today's episode of the color of your eyes has to do with the amount of melanin you have in your iris. Melanin is a pigment, or natural coloring, found in animal tissue. It gives our skin and hair their color, and our eyes are no different. Having less pigment gives you blue eyes. Having a little bit more will make your eyes green, and if you have lots of pigment, it leads to brown eyes. You or someone you know might have different eye colors or patches within one eye. For instance, blue eyes with green around the edges or green eyes with brown around the irises are common. When this happens, it's because different areas within the actual eye make different amounts of melanin, changing the colors. What color eyes you end up with is genetic, meaning it's passed down from your parents even if you don't share the same eye color. Science is still trying to understand exactly what genes in our eyes get passed down to determine our eye color. So far, the key gene in brown eyes has been discovered, but experts have had no luck so far uncovering the gene for green eyes. Okay, so that's why people have different colored eyes, but one question remains. What about the one in every 100 Americans who have two different colored eyes? Just about every baby is born with gray eyes, but in the first several months after you're born, the color in the irises develops, giving you your eye color. The melanin levels in a baby's eyes determine how dark their eyes become. However, for those one in 100, the amount of melanin in each eye isn't uniform. This is called heterochromia. Complete heterochromia happens when each eye is one distinct color. Central heterochromia, on the other hand, is when your eyes have multiple colors mixed across the two. But don't worry, not only is heterochromia a completely harmless condition, but it can look kind of cool too. And now you know why we have different eye colors. Every day, people all across the planet are plagued by allergies. But why? What causes allergies in the first place, and why do we get them? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. If you're lucky enough to not have allergies, you probably have a friend or family member who does. The triggers range from animals, medications, and foods to dust, pollen, and microbes floating around in the air. The most common food allergies are things like milk, eggs, nuts, especially peanuts, shellfish, wheat, soy, fish, and tons of others. Lots of allergies have nothing to do with food. Pollen, dust mites, mold, animal dander, insect stings, latex, and certain medications are the most common culprits. Allergies cause all types of terrible reactions. Watery, itchy, red eyes, coughing, sneezing, Achoo. runny or itchy nose, rashes, hives, stomach cramps, and even <clears throat> vomiting. Ugh. Okay, so those are the most common allergies, but what actually causes an allergic reaction? Well, whenever you have an allergy to something, your body is mistaking something harmless, like a pollen or a peanut, as a possible threat. Your body then kicks into overdrive producing antibodies to fight off the harmless allergen that it's mistaking for danger. Those well-meaning antibodies release chemicals called histamines into your blood. Histamines are great when you really need to fight something off, but when they attack by mistake, like during an allergic reaction, they cause a lot of the classic symptoms itchiness, redness, swelling, and all the rest. Most allergic reactions are a bother 
but not super dangerous. But there are some kinds of allergic reactions that can be deadly. They can cause asthma attacks or even more severe problems breathing and swallowing until treated. According to experts, whether or not you have allergies tends to be hereditary, which means your mom and dad can pass them down to you. Usually kids don't inherit specific allergies from their parents, but they are more likely to develop their own if their parents have them. Oh, and if you're one of the lucky ones out there without any allergies, don't let your guard down yet because people can develop brand new allergies all the way into adulthood. And now you know why we get allergies. Hair doesn't just vary in color, it can be straight, wavy, curly, or anywhere in between. But why? What causes some people to have straight hair and others to have curly? Let's find out on today's episode of Colossal Question. It turns out that whether you have super straight hair or a bunch of tight curls, you can thank your genes. But how exactly? Experts are still trying to determine exactly how our genes work to make our hair look a certain way. But studies have shown that your DNA is definitely a huge factor. Let's start with the basics. Every hair on your body grows out of its own hair follicle, which are tiny little organs just below the surface of your skin. Cells inside the follicle divide and multiply slowly pushing upwards and hardening along the way. By the time the hardening cells get long enough to poke out of your skin, they've hardened into a hair. How curly a single strand of human hair gets depends on the hair follicle it's growing out of. If a follicle isn't quite symmetrical, it produces a strand of hair in a slightly oval shape, which tends to naturally curl the longer it gets. If a follicle is symmetrical, the hair it makes will come out round and stay straight no matter how long it gets. And the shape of your hair follicles, it turns out, are determined by the genes you inherit from your parents. Usually, Curly hair is a bit more dry than straight hair because oils from your scalp have an easier time traveling down a straight strand of hair. But this also means that straight and wavy hair have a tendency to get a lot greasier than curly hair because of all that oil. So no matter what kind of hair you have, straight and oily or curly and dry, you only have your family to thank for it. 